Well, hello folks, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, thank you very much for showing up, and thank you very much for all the people who showed up for my uh, 1,000 um, subs special, and in fact, all the people who decided to watch it afterwards. Okay, I hope those people who were featured on it uh, take what I said about them uh, with a bit of humour in which it was intended. So what is this video about? Well, this carries on with the nonsense that Nathan Oakley and uh, his little band of, uh, of warriors, sleeping warrior himself, and of course the little guy that they keep slapping around. Unfortunately for this little guy, he thinks that being slapped around is okay. He's that desperate for their attention that he thinks that's fine. He thinks he deserves it. And you know, of course, I'm talking about Owen. And Owen thinks that um, these uh, people like Nathan Oakley and Sleeping Warrior are so important that um, it's okay to be slapped around. To be honest, I feel sorry for him. Never mind. What's on this video? Well, this one covers the topic of diffraction limit. Now, Nathan Oakley and uh, Sleeping Warrior and the like have been banging on about diffraction limit lately. That is because their black swan nonsense is well and truly cooked. So, this is the new thing. Actually, it's been quite a while. Lots of people have debunked this, but never mind, it's back on the table again. So, here we are back again having another go at debunking it. Okay, so what he's saying is that when you observe ships, and uh, for instance, these wind turbines are over the horizon, what you're observing is a diffraction limit. That's what they're saying. Okay. Now, Nathan Oakley actually says quite explicitly that that's his opinion. So he's not saying it's science, although um, I think uh, Sleeping Warrior might be, and uh, certainly Arwen, well, he just agrees with them. Um, he's not saying that it's science. He's saying that it's his opinion. So he does say that. Um, I concede. And of course, that wouldn't be something that they would allow us to do, to say it's our opinion. Never mind, I'll explain to you, Nathan Oakley, why your opinion is wrong. Okay, so let's have a look at what this is. Diffraction limit is the limit at which one can no longer resolve the objects clearly in the distance. Okay, so it's reached this diffraction limit if you can no longer resolve the uh, object. Okay, for instance, if we can stay far enough away from this, these two pens are, are together like this, and if we get further and further away from them, it will appear as though they're merging together, and then there'll be a point at which we can't tell them apart, and it looks like one object. That essentially is what we mean by the diffraction limit. That point where we can no longer tell where they are two separate objects. So, the diffraction limit applies to entire objects. So this is one of the key things that makes what Nathan says wrong. What Nathan says is that the diffraction limit is only applying to the bottom of objects. Because clearly we can see the wind turbines very nicely. We can see all of it. We can see the tops. It's only the ones that are behind the horizon where we can't see half of them. Or in some cases, we can only see the blades. But they are still clearly visible as blades. It's not like the blades are coming together like you'd expect to see in a diffraction limit. They still clearly the blades. You can see them very, very clearly. This would not happen with diffraction limit. With diffraction limit, it would be more like this. This is where the things are away in the distance. They get smaller and smaller in the distance. And the ones that are closer together will come close together so that you can't resolve them apart. You're not even able to tell that uh, there's two of them there or however many there are. And they'll be smaller and smaller as well. So diffraction limit doesn't just apply in one plane. Okay, so it's, it applies to the entire object. 
All right, so the other thing about it is, of course, the horizon would be beyond these objects. So you'd see these objects, the diffraction limit would have them so close together that you practically can't tell what they are. But beyond that, the horizon would keep going. That's not what happens here. We have an abrupt horizon and the, the wind turbines behind it are very, still very, very clear and you cannot see the horizon keeping on going. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, the key thing here. And that is that the turbines and ships disappear long before they reach the diffraction limit. And that is the key. Okay, so over here, it's a long, long way away, the distance R to, to the objects, from the observer to the object, is a long, long way away. So, And those things get smaller and smaller in the distance, and of course they come closer and closer till they merge, so that they look like they're just one object. That doesn't happen over here, as I said. Okay, so let's have a look over here. Over here we've got the two objects. Now S is the uh, distance between the two objects. R is the distance from the observer to, to the um, objects. Okay, and theta is the, the angle between them from the observer's perspective. Okay, so w two objects like that, for instance, as you get further and further, they'll get closer and closer, but not only get closer and closer, get smaller and smaller as well, like this. And at this point over here, look at look over here at the diffraction pattern. Um, over here, they've got two separate peaks uh, that represent that represent the two uh, objects. Um, and then you've got um, again closer and closer. At this point over here, would reach the diffraction limit, where you can't tell them apart. That would be the last point at which you could tell them apart. Uh, you can't tell them apart beyond that, and over here and over here they look like one object. Having a look again at the physics of this, um, the blue light, so um, the different wavelengths, uh, over here we've got blue light and red light, and uh, at, blue, at the blue light we have a very narrow uh, diffraction pattern, and at the red light we have a very wide diffraction pattern. So what we can do is we can tell that the wavelength is a function of this phenomenon, all right? And in fact, the um, formula that was made by Lord Rayleigh um, suggests that the angle is equal to uh, plus or minus 1.22 times lambda. That's the wavelength over D, the distance meaning the uh, size of the aperture. Okay, and as I said, S equals R theta, where R is the distance to the object. And, uh, and S is the distance between the objects. We obviously look at things in white light, so that's we average this out, um, and this formula that lambda then over there becomes the average wavelength uh, that we'd look at, looking at that invisible light. Let me just reiterate what the main thing here is, the, my main point here. My main point is that the turbines and ships disappear before there's any chance that these objects would reach the diffraction limit. They'd be far enough away for them to reach the diffraction limit. Certainly these wind turbines and ships. When the ships are going over the horizon, you get to see the ship properly. You get to see its mast, you get to see the bridge, you get to see all sorts of features on the ship as it's going over the horizon. Diffraction limit is not obscuring those parts of the ship. And certainly as the ship goes down below the horizon, you can continue to see this all the way until the ship is completely not visible any longer. Again, long before it reaches this diffraction limit. Once more, what would happen on the flat Earth? Of course, it would just keep going in the distance like this, and we'd still see it. We'd still see the entire structure. Wouldn't be able to make out quite what it is, uh, if it's gone beyond the diffraction limit, but we'd still see all of the structure. In other words, from the top of it to the bottom of it. It would be squished, but we'd be able to see it. So I think that pretty much covers all of this. I think uh, 
If you are one of uh, Nathan Oakley's followers and you do happen to have a brain with, you know, roughly the size of a peanut, if you could manage that, then you would know that he's spinning you a big yarn. Okay? Look at what's happened here. All right? So believe whatever you like. Believe the earth is flat. Have your little fantasy. But knock this one out of the park. Okay? Because you know that it's wrong. All right? So Nathan, come on. Lose this one. That's enough. Um, if you like my videos, please, you know, press the subscribe button. Now I'm at uh, 1060, somewhere between 1060 and 1070 because it says 1 1.06, so you don't know. Anyway, it's around there. Um, hopefully it'll get up a bit more uh, soon um, and then I will do more of these videos more often. Okay, so press that uh, subscribe button, press the like button, press the dislike button, whatever floats your boat. And I will see you next time. Cheers.